Yep, going live. Sorry for the delay. We needed our coffees because coffee is for closers. Yes. <laughs> so Luke is with me from Expat Unchained. It's a shirt right here. Expat Unchained. And, uh, look at the, the back. Fortune favors the bold. <laughs> <laughs> I have like 10, 10 of these. Yeah, cool, man. Different designs. I'll have to do that. I have to get a shirt for myself, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's you know a lot of the viewers want it, uh, so it's you know I wanted to wait until I got to ten thousand subscribers at least before mm -hmm. I did this, but uh, I already knew that the way it's going with the way I'm getting shadow banned, that uh, I'm not uh, it could take years before I get to ten thousand. I was shooting up like when I first started before the shadow ban, like when it was just organic. Um, uh, I gotta pull up the chat box. I knew that I would hit 10,000. It's a really nice iPad, that. Thanks. I got another comment here. Francis Harford. Cool. On, on our last video. Very nice. That's, All uh, the best. Good day. Yeah. So today we're going to do something different. We're going to talk about top five cities to live in Asia. So the thing about it is, you know, before I came over to Asia, I did an extensive amount of travel and research. And you know, that takes a lot of time, energy, and money. So trying to help those uh, looking to move and break free of their Western chains, uh, move to Asia, we want to actually talk about, you know, what are the best places, the best cities in Asia uh, to live. So what we've got is a questionnaire. There's about 25 questions we'll run through. We're gonna do this in the second half of the vlog. So we're just gonna talk for probably about five or 10 minutes first. That's me. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, we'll, we'll talk for five or 10 minutes first, and then we'll jump into the different points. There's 25 questions in total. Cheers. Okay, so we're gonna ask ourselves, uh, ask each other 25 questions, go over those questions, and um, yeah, if you wanna comment during, uh, feel free. The other thing too is on my vlog, uh, well, sorry, on my group page, what, I, what I've done is I've actually posted the 25 questions. So if you uh, want to actually be involved in uh, you know, finding the top five best cities in Asia, you can vote. So you can definitely vote. Uh, it's on our Property Club group page. So on our group page, we've got a post that actually has the 25 questions. There's five points, and you've got a number from one to five what you think is the best city for the question. For example, you know, the best place for retirement, uh, the best place to buy property, this sort of thing. Uh, so if you just number it, if you think Manila is the best, put it as number one. If you think, uh, you know, Pattaya is, is okay, uh, maybe put that as a number three or number five, depending on how you feel and the question. So yeah, look, just a bit of background. Uh, about Luke, yeah. expat unchained. Welcome, welcome, mate. Yeah, yeah. and you can welcome. see the chat here. There's yeah. a chat box there. But yeah, cool. So we got um, three people watching right now. Awesome. Hello, three people. Nice to meet you. Hey, you I think it's an eight now. It says oh. on mine. Okay. <laughs> Nine, no eight. Oh. A little bit small. I probably need my glasses, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> These are prescriptions that I can see pretty good. So tell us a bit about yourself and, and yeah. your experience as an expat. Where have you lived? Okay, so uh, well, I started out as in the army. It was when I first got my uh, world travel uh, started in. I got a comment here, Lyndon Price. Okay, KL. He says KL is my number one. Cool. What's that? Um, Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah, I started out in the army with my world travel and. I think the first time I left the USA, never been to Mexico or Canada still, uh, and I don't think I ever, you know, I, I'd be fine to never go to either one of those places, but, um, um, so I went to Italy, no, sorry, I, I landed in Germany first, and I was going to get stationed in Germany, but then they stationed me in Italy for one year, Wow. then I went to Afghanistan for a year, then back to Texas, and then, well, yeah, then uh, I started out as a civilian contractor, went back to Afghanistan, and then I finally got to go to uh, Thailand, which is... Yeah! Uh, <laughs> so Thailand! That's, that's when I fell in love with Southeast Asia. It was first uh, Pattaya, and uh, I do have a lid for that cup if you want. 
Uh, oh, good, buddy. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm good. And uh, so Patea was the first one. I fell in love. Um, it was like breathing uh, fresh air for the first time in my life. If I was raised in a sewer and I've never <laughs> known fresh air, <laughs> that's like wow. that's like the comparison. And also, that's also another comparison that I brought up last time. Uh, after the last stream is uh, when people ask me, uh, are, you, are you ever going to go back? To, do you want to just go back and visit? That's like asking someone that broke out of prison, do you want to go back to prison and visit prison? Or do you just want to go back and maybe just live there again someday? No, I don't ever want to go back. <laughs> so you lived in Thailand and Cambodia. Ca Th Thailand and Cam first uh, Thailand. I got married and divorced there to a Thai woman. That seems like implied, but every time I say that, people ask, was oh, she Thai? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I would never marry a Western woman. Uh, <laughs> no way. I made a... H to their own. <laughs> but uh, have you done it? No, I, okay. I haven't. No. I <laughs> can't uh, comment there. <laughs> and, uh, and also because of the legal issues, uh, they can legally uh, ruin your life and make you a slave. License to steal. Yeah. And... So I got married and divorced in Thailand, of course, to a Thai woman. And as far as women go, I think she's the top, still at the top of, uh, top of, uh, she's the best. She's great. Uh, no hard feelings against her. But, These things happen. Yeah. Um, it was the family, uh, the family and friends that separated us. Actually, my one of my exes is Thai, so mm -hmm. I understand. I was going to ask you about that. Look, lovely lady, um, she's happily married now, and good on her, it just uh, didn't work out for us, but that that's how the cookie crumbles, unfortunately, and uh, you've got to move on in life. Yeah. So Cambodia, you were so, living there for how long? Right after my divorce. So I did two years in Thailand, yep. two years in Cambodia. Well, awesome. so it was like a year and 11 months in Thailand, about a year and 11 months and around there, just under two years, both yeah, cool, places, cool. Uh, Cambodia. That was like the Wild West, but now it's over for me um, because there was a huge hardcore Chinese invasion, changed everything very quickly. Sure. I really loved it. A lot of Chinese investment and they're buying and building casinos, I heard. Yeah, especially in Sihanoukville. Yep. I was there at grounds, that's the ground zero of the invasion. Uh, that's where they literally kicked me out of every hotel. Because first, I was at this one great hotel, and wow. it, it got bought out uh, by the Chinese. And uh, so, uh, anybody that's not Chinese or not part of a certain company that they're with is not allowed to stay there anymore. So and it's become private, a private hotel, pretty or or just over way like uh, multiplied by fifty times the price of. Oh stay my there. God! Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And. Um, uh, so then, so they kicked me out of there. There wasn't even a, an option to pay more. It's just you got to get out by such and such date. And then uh, I Wait. went to another one. It was really beautiful, uh, but that one also got bought up by the Chinese after like five months. And then I couldn't even find after that one was gone. And I couldn't even find a hotel in the entire town. Basically, I, I was I found one to just to stay for a few weeks until I could get back to Phnom Penh. And then, um, even while I was there, they raised the price massively on that one. And I found out that was also Chinese owned. And uh, I was... Not good, not <laughs> good. So, from Cambodia, you decided you had enough of that. And yeah. we're in Subic Bay. This is where we're filming today. We're in Subic Bay, yes. uh, Philippines. So, if you're not aware, Subic Bay is uh, Subic Bay of Longapo, Subic Freeport. And close to us, we've got Barrio Barreto. So, it's a good, good location. Not too far from Club Pampanga and Angeles City, so it's a great spot. I personally love Subic Bay. How do you find it so far, man? I love it. Um, so I did Manila for one year already. That was a prison sentence uh, because because I lived. Uh, I was I've lived on a very small income for the past uh, four and a half years, and it just recently went up a lot because of some developments in my life. Um, my income is multiplied by like four or five times. Awesome. And so uh, I, I had I was living on like eight hundred dollars a month for four and a half years now, and uh, so I I took what I could get in Manila, and I was just living where with no other foreigners around, um, and a really trashy area. Uh, it was called F Residences, and it's on Molino and Sierra Madre, uh, right near Star Mall in Mandaluyong. And uh, that was really a prison sentence because um, 
Uh, they're really loud, and I live right by the, the, what do you call it, the terminal for the jeepneys and trikes. Uh, Mate, you should have tried just in Mandaluyong, on the border of Mandaluyong and Ortigas, a building where I bought a condo, which is uh, Shangri-La. Shangri-La is a really nice place to live. Mm. What I liked about it is, unlike other apartments, you've got to be careful in Manila what apartments you choose, because some of the walls are like paper thin. And uh, like they could be just hollow blocks, and because they're hollow blocks, like you can hear the neighbor next door. I remember I was staying in one unit in Makati, and I could literally hear people doing their business next door. It was, so they they oh. left their doors open. And they left their doors open, and they would hang out in the hallway. And uh, so that was the main problem. It's like mm. even if they were if they were in their room with the door closed, that'd be I'd be much better with that. But they well, even open. in the apartment, like I lived in a unit in Makati and literally I could hear what was happening through oh, yeah. the walls because they're hollow bricks. Oh. Like I could hear people talking, I could hear their conversation <laughs> and doing their business, which was not so good. Yeah. So, you know, I found a good building which was Shangri-La, just a bit about that. But mine was 13,000 pesos. Yeah, yeah, well, mate, from 20,000 20, pesos, 25,000 okay. pesos, that actually. Um, well, yeah, from 20, 25,000, that, that's all. Like some small studio condos, they're not that big. You know, granted, maybe 34, 35 square meters, but solid concrete walls, maybe only eight or nine, ten units per floor, and uh, good facilities. It links up to the, the hotel there, it links up to the, uh, the shopping mall, Shangri La shopping mall, yeah. only a short distance from, from uh, SM Mega Mall. So, I, mean, I, I personally really I had a different experience just being honest. Know it was only 20,000. Well, you have to know someone to get that price, that's the local price. And mine is like this size of. Um, well, not that, that big, yeah. Honestly, mate, like if you know someone, you can get something for like 25k. I actually found a unit at uh, when Dwayne Woolley first moved, and I found a unit in the new building in Shang One for about 25 or 26,000 peso for a one year lease. So, Dwayne's loved that building, it's got some beautiful uh, pools, resort pools. Um, you know, facilities, gym, it's even got its own cinema. So I had a bit of a different experience, to be honest. I was really thrilled at first, you know, it was, it was an adventure at first. Yeah. Uh, so I really enjoyed it for like a few months and eh, maybe like five, five months in, I was still like dating and having fun that time that way. But that Manila's was, good for dating. Yeah, it's really easy. Definitely good for dating. There's uh, some great women there. Here. Yeah. Are you? <laughs> Educated, intellectual, hard-working women, yeah. uh, they speak English for sure. Mm -hmm. So look, just a bit about my background now, we've, we've touched on uh, Luke's background and you know his adventure. So I gotta say about Manila, yeah. that was, well because of that lease, that was, a, that was what made it a, par, uh, a uh, that prison condo. sentence. Yeah. That, that, uh, that, was, that was my worst living situation in the past four and a half years, that was the worst one I've ever had. Well, if you can, just a tip, maybe stay in the place on an Airbnb uh, one month rental first before yeah. you sign a six or 12 month contract to know that that's the building you're happy with. The other thing too, is you might pay a bit more, but you know, if it means you get peace of mind, security, you might be better off paying 20 to 30,000 pesos rather than you know, 15. Yeah, what were you paying 15, 16? I was paying 13,000. Yeah, and now well, 13, I'm, that's cheap. That's really cheap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Super cheap. So I, I did what I had to do. It was yeah. like that, and I didn't have time. I didn't have a, it takes a budget to be able to shop around and yeah. you know, stay in a hotel while you're shopping around. And or, hotels are really yeah. expensive in Manila. Yeah. Very expensive. Yeah. I mean, I lived yeah. in hotels for two years in Cambodia. You can do that. It's pretty cheap. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. I did nothing but I did not get an apartment or anything. Just I, monthly stays? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Month to month. Um, Oh, I did only hotel life in uh, Cambodia for two years, and and you I, had a good video. I remember seeing there was some kind of resort place or something that you were staying yeah, in, in uh, Cambodia. Siem Reap, maybe? Yeah, maybe Siem Reap. It was. Uh, uh, there was kind of like a, a view of the the resort overhead. Like I don't know how you how you got that video. I think it was uh, maybe a drone shot or something. For no, I, no? I, I, I never I've never gotten a drone yet. Haven't got a drone yet? Uh, I'd like to. I, I got that idea from your video. So. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and that, since I've uh, got a big paycheck recently, that was it's on my list of things to get. Uh, and uh, so somebody else here said CM Reap. Uh, CM Reap. Uh, Asia Street Monks. 
Uh, well, I still need to go to Cambodia to be fair. It's yeah. awesome. I mean, it really awesome. has a special place in my heart, but it was the Wild West and that's what I liked about it, but now it's, uh, now it's like, a, it's, it's, no, it's just changed drastically in, in a few months. Cool. And, uh, but it's still great to visit, but, um, and also I think it's still the easiest visas, I think so. And, I heard that, yeah, I heard visas and setting up companies are actually really easy in Cambodia, that's right, yeah. And that was the number one thing for me. Yeah. I just got off my divorce and I was coming from Thailand and it's really hard to keep a visa in Thailand. Okay. Now it is, yeah, visas in Thailand for visas, a lot tougher than it used to be, that, that's yeah. for sure. I'm getting a lot of people on the vlog saying Thailand sucks because it's too hard to get a visa and yeah. there's too many requirements and uh, they actually want you now to actually go to some kind of government office or the local police and check in with them like quarterly, like every three yeah. months. And when I was there, yeah. they were just starting to require that you um, you give them your Facebook page. Really? <laughs> when I was still there a few years ago, they were asking wow. that. It's like, oh man, this is That's an down. invasion of <laughs> privacy, man. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I was thinking about maybe going back there, but uh, uh, it's just getting worse. And I have a, one of my good friends, Chris Cantu, who's still living there now. Um, he's in uh, Phuket. And uh, it, it is going down. I mean, as far as wow. all the regulation and just um, some people like to defend what's going the the government, but I I think that um, it's not one aspect is they're trying to say that um, that uh, they're trying to get the bad guys out and the good guys in. But I think I don't think that's re that's really just about uh, trying to squeeze every last drop they possibly can out of the foreigners. Uh, and, well, I, I think the government, to be fair, the government has been making a move to try and make Thailand like a luxury tourism destination. And they already get a lot of tourism. So they've got a good airport in Bangkok, Swanapum Airport. And uh, yeah, it's a luxury destination and uh, prices are increasing. There's no doubt about that. What's the other? I forgot what the other airport is called. Uh, uh, Don Wang? Don Wang, yeah. Don Wang. <laughs> I, yeah. I like that. Uh, that's a little bit better. It's less uh, busy. Um, I think that's the domestic airport now, though, isn't it? Oh, I I, ca I got there from um, from uh, Cambodia, had a way over there. And I think Air Asia flies into that airport also. Mm, yeah, that's what I use. Yeah, I, I recommend Air Asia. Um, oh, especially Pattaya is where they're trying to make it luxury. Pattaya, <laughs> Pattaya, that's I love you, Mak Mak. That's what they're really trying to change, right? Oh, someone had a question. I forgot to uh, answer that question. They said, are we drinking whiskey? Actually, uh, <laughs> neither of us actually drink alcohol, believe it or not. Is that right, Luke? Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I'll do that on special occasions, but I, uh, I used to drink, I used to enjoy drinking by myself. Like, and I, would, I used to be a heavy drinker for 12 years, but now I, I hardly, rarely ever drink. I used to be a heavy drinker and up until uh, 2018, New Year's Eve, where my New Year's Eve resolution was to stop drinking. So now, coffee is for close. <laughs> coffee is for closers. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we're drinking. I said almost said we're coffee is for closure. <laughs> 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 no, no, coffee is for closers. So okay. definitely, that that's my drink of choice now, coffee. And this is my third cup cup today. Whoa. Coconut Whoa. oil and coconut oil and coconut oil. Yeah. yeah. Bulletproof coffee. Bulletproof. I already had my two tablespoons, and there was still some left in my in my cup because it's sticky. So I'm still getting the remnants of the coconut oil from my nice cup, cup, by the way. The the Starbucks Steely. Yeah. Yeah. Cup. I got you see those ones in the upper right there. They both. Oh, cool. The plastic Starbucks. They they yep. crack and they start pouring inside the outer part of the cup. Do you know what I bought? I actually bought from Boracay Island a Starbucks mug. That reminds me, yeah, big mug, and it's got like little pictures on it, like imprints and stuff from Boracay. So that was really cool. That's my favorite mug. That's what I drink out of. And I got this one from the um, uh, VA or the Embassy, the black one. Of this, the That's actual, cool. Actual That's cool, one. man. I never tried it, but it changes color when you. Oh, really? I'm not sure what. It, wow. Coal or hot. army green or. Um, it, it's just like the logo of the embassy. That's uh, cool, man. That's really show cool. Up. Very There's cool. my cat over there. <laughs> yeah. I got three baby cats. Little uh, kittens. They're like, uh, I've had them for uh, maybe three weeks now. Maybe two. two and, weeks. and that was a shock to me because Luke's only been here, what, a month or two months now? In, um, yeah, I, I, well, I, I started in April. Um, in, uh, I took like, 
alum uh, two two weeks in in uh, Barreto and uh, in the pub hotel in Barreto. Yeah, cool. And uh, it's way so it's much more time than I needed really. It's I, I'm really decisive. Uh, sometimes I can be too decisive, and uh, I just found this place and I was like I jumped on it. Uh, it's uh, it's forty thousand pesos. Uh, which is way more than what I was paying, but I wanted to make sure that I live somewhere quiet because I have PTSD and I also want to write a book. I mean, it's already written. It's just been on the back burner. I'm cool. uh, living in cities. Uh, I haven't been able to hear myself think for the past few years, but now here I can get a book done and not be going out of my mind. Um, so I, I'm paying for a nice... You know where we live it's very nice it is uh, a lovely home so security that's why we're a little bit late we're making some coffee uh, having a look around the house and uh, it's a big house actually it's a really nice place to live you found a good spot yeah and it's all furnished um, yeah and um, so, so you just fell in love with Subi Bay you just thought hey I'm gonna put down some roots buy some kittens you got three kittens yeah yeah um, because I was gonna get two, so because you want them to have company, they get lonely. I was gonna get two, but then um, it was uh, three siblings together in a cage. That guy said they're inseparable. So that if I only took two, that would leave one just totally out of luck and uh, alone, living in a cage. So I'd be like, I can't do that. And so I, I just took. Uh, I was like, why not take another one? And uh, so it's two girls and one boy. Yeah. And uh, I named them after Superman characters. Do you, do you want to show uh, the vloggers the little kittens? Sure. Uh, and what are their names, mate? So, so they're named after. G'day from Tassie. Kryptonians. Uh, well, from G'day from Subic Bay, but hello there in, in Tassie, Tasmania. They're uh, they're too scared. They're too scared. Uh, uh, or like maybe later. <laughs> Yeah, so Cal is the boy because that's Superman's name, Cal L. Cal. So it's just Cal. It's not Cal L. But then uh, Kara is a, a one girl. That's Superman's cousin. Kara Zorel is Supergirl and Power Girl. And Feora is another one. Feora. That's uh, from the Man of Steel movie. That's cool, man. I, I did the same thing. I've got the Cisco, Captain Cisco, and Quark, two French bulldogs from Deep Space Nine. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, knew, I knew the names from your videos, but I didn't know until I met you about, about the Deep Space Nine. Uh, it's a good, good watch, man. Really, I, I really enjoy Deep Space Nine. I've, I've watched it about four times over now, but it's pretty long. It's like seven or eight seasons. Oh, I just finished yeah. the original series, Star Trek: The Original Series. Yeah, rad, bro. I That's watched cool. every episode, and I, I'm almost done with the entire Twilight, the original Twilight. Oh, song. that is cool. <laughs> that is cool. I love the old Twilight song. Yeah, uh, I don't think I'm gonna watch the new one. I'm not. I'm pretty sure I will not watch the the, the new. They have a new series that just came out of Twilight Zone. Wow, but, I did not know that. Yeah, with you know big name actors like Greg Kinnear. Wow. But um. Uh, I, I prefer to only watch old movies and old TV shows, and especially old music. I do, mm. not, want, I do not like any new music at all. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> anyway, so look, I just we, we touched on Luke's background. I'm just going to give a bit about my background. I've lived in mainland China. I've done business and worked in Hong Kong and China and Singapore. Uh, I've lived for a long time in the Philippines. I've lived in Thailand. Uh, spent a bit of time in... in uh, Mainland China, Philippines, Thailand, they're the three main places where I've actually lived and I love. Uh, those places are great. I'm well traveled throughout Asia, um, Japan, I love Japan, uh, spend a lot of time. Thailand, I go there probably once every single month and uh, I'm actually permanently based here in the Philippines. So I do travel a lot uh, throughout Asia. I'll be going to Hong Kong next and probably Macau. So I've gone to Hong Kong and, and spent time and worked in Hong Kong before also. So I think, you know, we are two experts. Oh, here we go. Here's the kitty. When it comes to expat living in Asia. So, you know, we can actually um, say that we're going to give you an unbiased vote. And what we're doing again, you know, with this questionnaire, we're going to go through certain questions, talk about those questions, and we're going to vote. And we're numbered one, two, three, four, five as to the best cities in Asia. So if you want to follow along our Facebook group page, actually they're the questions. So you can actually copy paste those questions and actually write in the top five cities as we go along today or after the video. So that's fine if you want to actually join and vote because we want unbiased opinion of expats, um, you know, or people living in Asia 
and to try and find the best, the very best top five cities in Asia for you. So you don't waste your time, money and resources, you know, looking for the best places. We're going to help you with that. Yes. So I think we'll move into that now. Um, our first question, our first question, top five best cities to live in Asia. Our first question is retirement. So Luke, what, what do you think about retirement? We talked about this the other day. You were yeah. saying you're That's not sure if you'd retire in the Philippines. Is that no. right? Yeah. I'm thinking uh, as I get older, uh, so we can't have a gun here. Everybody else has guns pretty much. I mean, it's very easy for Filipinos to find guns. I know that. Um, and uh, so, but meanwhile, it's very hard for foreigners to have, it will be illegal. I it think. is illegal yeah. for a foreigner to carry a firearm in the Philippines. Yeah. So as an old, that's not an issue now. Like nobody will give me a problem. I've never had a problem with safety ever in um, Southeast Asia anywhere. But when I'm older and if I'm staying in one spot and people are going to know where I am, if I'm just always in the same spot, they'll eventually, if they am there for a decade or a year, they'll, they'll know. And I'll be a target. Uh, when you're older, you're more of a target and um, more uh, easy, easily victimized. So if you can't have a gun and they have guns, that that's, makes it so easy. And um, so I'm thinking maybe, maybe I could try for the future when I get to be like 70 or something, maybe Poland or something like that. But can we try and keep on topic? Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, so but just with land. Asia, because we want to yeah. focus on Asia today. So if, if it was for you, would you say Thailand, Cambodia, Philippines, what, what do you think would be the best? And, and try and break that down to the actual city where you think yeah. you'd retire. I think uh, Thailand, except uh, I have free healthcare here with the VA. Oh, the, wow. Yeah, so that's why I'm here, really. Yeah. I, I need the healthcare. Um, and uh, so I have disabilities, I have PTSD, and I need to get regular treatment. So the VA is here, so that's why I, I, I have to be here. And uh, so. That's free healthcare for me, and that's why there's more uh, American expats here than anywhere in Southeast Asia. What, they, what city in Thailand do you think would be the best for retirement? Huh. Um, I would, first one that come to mind, oh sorry, uh, I'll deal with Phuket, I guess. Uh, yep, Phuket. Uh, I would think so. I haven't been there though, but oh. I lived in Udon Thani and Bangkok and Pattaya. But, um, so Bangkok came to my mind first, Bangkok and Pattaya. I loved Udon Thani, but I heard that also got invaded by the Chinese. Udon Thani was great. It's a really fantastic place. Um, but uh, I would think Phuket uh, for a, for, because for, for retirement, you want to think safety. So uh, places that are more developed and- um, Nice beaches too for retirement. Yeah, and more, more other foreigners around. If more quiet. Yeah. yeah. So I would think Phuket, and my friend Chris Phuket. Cantu is there now. Yeah. Would, would you list that as number one, would you say? Uh, well, I, I would think right away Thailand. Yeah. Unless you're an army veteran like me, then you want to be in the Philippines for that, for the free, for the health care from the VA. It's not free. I but mean, also the <laughs> Philippines, Clark and Subic Bay, you can actually own a leasehold title property, a 50-year yeah. lease in your own name. So look, you know, for me personally, I feel I prefer Subic Bay. Subic Bay is, without a doubt, for retirement, I'm going to say number one. Look, my village, I'm not worried about being able to own a firearm. I would if I was outside of the Freeport zone. But in my village, in Kalayaan, in Subic Bay, it's a very safe place and we have private security. So that, that makes me feel at yeah. ease. At first, I'll be, I'll be honest, I had reservations. Because I was like, oh, I haven't lived in Subic Bay before. Is it dangerous? You know, it seems almost a bit too quiet. Is someone going to break into my house? Is it safe? You know, it could be harmed. What about my family and raising a family there? But since living here for about, you know, two years on and off, and I travel a lot, um, I, I can comfortably say of all the places I've lived, the number one I, I can recommend for retirement is Subic Bay. So yeah, I'm going to write that as Subic Bay. You You're going to agree? Yeah. Okay, cool. Agree that. Yeah, for sure. Subic Bay. Yeah. I mean, that's why I'm here. I mean, the, the visas are just too hard in Thailand. And right now, like, yeah. people are getting kicked out. Uh, well, like, Thailand, that is the problem, yeah. But you can get a retirement visa. But what I heard about the retirement visas is it is actually getting harder in Thailand. Yeah. There's more requirements, yeah. like you need like 800 or a million uh, Thai baht in a bank account. 
and then you're going to have to check in with the local authorities on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah, and that's not they great. Keep, they keep raising the requirements, and and not, nobody really knows. But it's not, um, what do you call it, consistent. Nobody knows what the requirements are because it's always changing. And the changes. Yeah. There's constant changes happening. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy who was in charge of it, he's out of office now. Big, big joke was his nickname. Uh, and so he's out now. And there's another guy in charge of that. Yeah. Uh, so it's always changing. But uh, so I, I have to agree with Subic Bay, Subic Bay number one. Number yeah. two. I'm actually going to say Thailand. I'm going to choose a city in Thailand. Now, we're not going to go through all of these today. We're just going to talk and, and release the final results next week when everyone's voted. But I'm going to say, actually, uh, Pattaya. Pattaya is a great place. You can rent houses cheaply. Uh, it's fairly safe. I, I don't see that much crime unless, you know, you're going out to Walking Street drinking very late at night, um, which, you know, getting older, you need to be careful about. The healthcare system is pretty good too. From yeah. friends living in Pattaya, you know, what I'm told is, uh, you know, you can actually get good healthcare cover, uh, health insurance, not only in uh, Thailand, but also Philippines. So look, I'm gonna put number two as Pattaya. Yeah, I would I would go with that or Phuket. Uh, just Phuket by reputation. Um, but um, I was gonna say Koh Sanui. But the reason I didn't put Koh Sanui is because it is kind of far out, it is isolated. Why I think Patti is important is there's lots to do, uh, good transport, you know, you can jump on the BART bus for, for 10 baht, and also health facilities. Whereas I'm not too sure about the health facilities. You know, what happens if you get sick? You know, that's important, you know, you wanna, you wanna live. If you get sick, you have a stroke or something, you need a hospital, um, you know, to make sure you're okay and you don't die. I know that sounds terrible, but you know, we've gotta plan for the worst and hope for the best. That's really important. Yeah. Really important. So yeah, when I was a heavy drinker, I would never really think about the future. Uh, but now, now, um, now I'm living my life in a more smart way and uh, um, healthy way. So now I'm always thinking about like. Uh, so I've been even just yesterday. I was talking to you and Tony uh, Shipley. Uh, shout out to um, shout out to Tony. Tony. What's their company name? Uh, Lilybeth. Uh, Subic Property. Subic Property. Yeah. Shout out. Hello. Uh, she wanted me to say that too. Yeah, cool. Uh, she said she's watching. All right, awesome. Uh, Get angry, Lily Beth. <laughs> so. Yeah, she's a lovely individual. Actually, she's a nice person. Yeah, yeah. really great uh, real estate agent here. She found this place for me, and uh, I just agreed yesterday to uh, renew the lease for another year. Um, so I'm I'm gonna be staying here, and uh, yeah, so super Long Bay, term. Yeah, another year at least. Uh, cool. I mean, after after my. Initials. So we'll, we'll fill in the blanks later. Let's move on to the second question. The second question, uh, I'll, I'll let you read the second question out, mate. Okay. Yeah. Uh, most affordable and best value for living. Hmm. Yeah. Most affordable and best value. Have you been to uh, mm. in in the is it Indonesia? Where is the? Um, I have. I've been spent a lot of time in Bali when I was younger. Okay. Yeah. I haven't been there. I haven't been to Indonesia yet, um, and I haven't been. I've I've only taken border runs to Laos, but I never yep. stayed in Laos for other than a border run. What about Cambodia? I mean, you've lived yeah. in Cambodia. What do you think? Is it affordable? That's, Is it good yeah. for you know living? So yeah, food, transportation, accommodation, all round uh, living expenses. Yeah. That was the first one that popped in my head. Cambodia. When I saw this. Uh, that was the first one. So it's just. I, I just uh, it's changing so fast, but so so is everything. So is Thailand. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of changes here. What about Chiang Mai? So that's near Lao, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's near uh, Udantani where I lived. Yeah. Uh, so I, I would think that's very similar to Udantani, and uh, so I really loved that. And except I know that Udantani is. Uh, sorry, Chiang Mai is even more westernized and more, it is. more like uh, more like Phuket. Uh, so um, there's so, a problem there at the moment with pollution. Too, yes, I heard. Yeah. yeah, I know that from uh, watching uh, from friends from me. Yeah, yeah. saying so, don't go there at the moment. Pollution is yeah. really bad. So, so that bad. I, like, I probably would have said Chiang Mai, but actually I'm, that's not even in my top five right now at present, just because of the pollution. And the problems and the westernization that's going on in Chiang Mai. So there's definitely problems there. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess the first one that pops in my head for most affordable and best value for living 
I guess I'll go for Cambodia because they're all. But yeah. But I think that um, I think that really, honestly, and what I've said before many times is that the um, cost of living, uh, after all, everything's factored in. I think they're all really close. All of these countries are exactly very similar in cost of living. Yeah. Uh, but so which city? Phnom Penh. Uh, Siem Reap. Because it's still kind of quiet, yep. and um, uh, it's uh, still it's also we'll find no shortage of Westerners, um, especially if you're your retirement age. I, uh, that's still in my head from the previous question. But um, normally, for the past four four years, I avoided other Westerners. But now, uh, after my one year in Manila, now I want to live with other foreigners for the first time. <laughs> uh, but uh, so, I would think. For Cambodia, then I guess the first one that pops in my head, it used to be, uh, used to be, um, what's it called, Siem Reap, but it's just that's just history now. So Siem Reap, Siem. Yeah, I'll go with Siem Reap. Well, or, sorry, I'll, I'll sorry, put sorry, that sorry. as my number two. Uh, Kampot, Kam Kam Kampot, Kampot, or Kem. Kampot. It's K A K A M P O T. That's like still kind of quiet, and Kep is right next door. K E P. Okay. And that would be if I still lived in Cambodia. That's where I would be. Uh, that's okay. that's kind of quiet, but still, you can find everything you need there. Uh, uh, well, I would have said Subic Bay, but actually, you know, rent, you know, for example, has been going out up. Uh, the other thing too is, um, you know, it's getting harder to find affordable properties uh, to buy. It is definitely harder, and prices are increasing. Also, um, you know, food is not that cheap. Fuel is not that cheap. Um, we've had, you know, recent tax changes like train taxes and that sort of thing where, you know, fuel has actually increased in, in, in uh, price. So it's gone from like, you know, 35 peso, for example, to like 45 peso per liter of fuel. So that's, that was a bit annoying to me. Didn't uh, the energy just go up this month? Yes, oh. and electricity in Subic Bay also went up. I don't even have anything to compare it to. Apparently they're saying it's because of the heat and there's more people actually using the electricity and that will go down in uh, off season. But look, I wasn't really happy when, you know, my bill increased like 80 US dollars per month to run my household. That, that was a bit frustrating. So I'd say for me, Subic is still in my top five, okay. but it's probably like number five at the moment for affordability because it is getting more expensive. It is a beautiful place to live, don't get me wrong, but it's not the cheapest place to live anymore. There are cheaper places. I'm not gonna lie about that. Yeah, yeah. so that's, that would be on my list. I mean, this is why I like, after much trial and error, that's why I'm here. I mean, yeah. so, uh, and I never want to go back to the West. <clears throat> I would prefer to never go, like I said, like asking a prisoner, do you want to go back to prison? Expat on chain. Do you want to, you know, stay in those Western chains? That mortgage slavery, that debt slavery. Uh, I don't know. Not the, for me, mate. The identity politics. I so. looked at it honestly. I looked at moving back, but it's just yeah. So look for me, most affordable and best value for living. Okay, I was going to say Patia, but the thing about Patia is, look, you can get really affordable and cheap rent and cheap condos that you can buy. It's probably not one, number one, it's probably number two on my list. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's number two is because, you know, property prices, especially new development stock in Patti is going up. Okay, it's definitely going up. Um, you know, there's some issues with visas and the cost of doing that and, and that sort of thing. And it's not as friendly as it used to be. So it's probably number two. Patti is still a great place and I love Patti. Close to my heart, I spend a lot of time there, um, no doubt. But is it the most affordable and best for living? No, I don't think so. I think there's probably another winner. I'm gonna park this one because I really need to think about which is number one. Uh, definitely not Bangkok. Bangkok probably wouldn't be in my top my top five anymore because look, prices have gone up and yeah. they're, they're just up and up for everything, for living costs, for accommodation, to rent, to buy, they are definitely up. So it's probably way down like, you know, seven, eight, nine on my list Bangkok. And for affordability and value for living, that's why I'm not even interested in Malaysia or oh, really? uh, Singapore because it's no just... No way, like, Singapore's number <laughs> one million on the list. Yeah, Malaysia is more expensive, right? I haven't even been there because I know it's more expensive, so yeah. I, it's just I, it's not something I even consider. If it's Especially when I was living on $800 a month for the past four years. Mm. Uh, 
so I I don't want to go where it's more expensive. But now that my income is higher, I'm I'm going to Eastern Europe and, and Russia for traveling, and maybe I'll retire there eventually, like 30, 40 years from now. But that's not the topic today. Okay, so we'll park that one. But Malaysia is, is not really on your list, right? Malaysia? No, it's still on the list. Anywhere in Asia is fine. I mean, but not in the top five cities. Not not for not for that question. No. <laughs> Too expensive, too expensive. So, but that might be the next one, right? Oh, I, I don't know. I haven't spent that much time green in Malaysia. But spaces. yeah, number three, question number three. Green spaces, parks, and walkability. So, you know, what's the best city? Thank you so much. <laughs> who was that? That was Francis. Francis. Shout out to Francis who donated $5. Uh, we weren't even expecting donations. But look, that is really very much appreciated. Thank you so much. For your donation and your support of the channel, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Francis. Double thumbs up for you, mate. Uh, I, I am a big fan of this channel. Um, I just did binges uh, because, like he was saying, you want to do research before you come somewhere. It's very important to yeah. do your research. You don't just show up like an idiot. you got to know what you're getting into. Exactly. <laughs> and it's costly to travel and to stay. And when you're a tourist for the first month or two, you're still finding your feet. And you might stay somewhere and, and be paying a thousand US per month and then realize you can get something comparable for 500 a month, you know? And, and to know the culture and know what not to do, you know? Whether you like it or not, yeah. Yeah, so you gotta know things before you just show up. You can just show up, uh, you'll, be, you'll be okay, unless you're a total wimp, but... Um, Better have some savings behind you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You gotta know what the prices are, so otherwise if you don't know, people will take advantage of you for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so you got to talk to other other expat or foreigners to ask what So yes, yeah, I did a lot of research by watching videos before I came to Subic. Thanks, buddy. And, yeah. Appreciate it. It will still keep going, I think, once it gets back on. Are we back? I think right. so. I think it cut out there yeah. for a second. I think we are back. That's if you can just comment below if you can see us. Yeah, it looks like, I, I can see on the iPad, it looks like we're back. Sorry, we cut out there for just a second. Not sure what happened. But anyway, green spaces, parks, and walking. So, where do you think is the best for green spaces and walking? Definitely not Manila. There's like no parks left, pretty much. I would guess Singapore. I mean, I've never been there, but uh, if that's what you, if you really want westernized and modern. Singapore's very clean, too. Beautiful parks. I've been there several times. Um, we spent a lot of time in Singapore actually for business. Yeah. Not Cambodia. Not, Not Cam Cambodia. That, that would be the bottom of, of the list for uh, for cleanliness. There yeah. are a lot of trash in the streets in Cambodia. Uh, that's that's wow. one of the biggest drawbacks of Cambodia. But I, I didn't really think about that. I was going for the Wild West and the most possible freedom and the easiest visas. And people just leave me alone and let me live my life. The minimum government interference. That's why I went there. It's changing rapidly but uh, yeah. so I didn't care about the trash as long as I have freedom. But Taiwan, Taipei, absolutely that's a really good one. Thank you Michael. Michael, yeah absolutely. Taipei I found was beautiful like Da'an Park, and some really nice parks. It's nice and clean and friendly so Singapore I'm probably going to put as number one. Taipei is number two. You know what actually I'm gonna put Taipei as number one because I'm not that big of a fan of Singapore to be honest <laughs> I put Taipei as number one and Singapore is number two I don't even want to go there unless I somehow become a millionaire and I have money to just burn oh, um. honestly even if you're a millionaire no offense <laughs> but nowadays a two-bedroom apartment in a nice you know district of uh, you know Singapore man you're spending two or three million minimum two or three million all right. Dollars, mate. Dollars. It's insane. Mate, I could have bought that same kind of condo 10 plus years ago for like six, seven hundred thousand. And I thought it was expensive then for a 50, 60 square meter apartment then, you know, in, in the city center, uh, someplace like uh, Orchard or something. But now, no, it, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. So is this all Asia or just all South Asia? Asia? All not, Asia. Not just South Asia? No, all Asia. Oh, okay. That's also why I don't, I don't want to go to China or Japan because of the cost of living. China and Japan is, I mean, J Japan is more, more more expensive, but yeah. China is way more expensive well, than Well, look, this. depends where you go, because look, Tokyo, and that's definitely on my list, because that's that's a great place for walking. I'm probably going to put uh, Tokyo as number three, 
of parks and, and walking and that sort of thing. Right, so Tokyo is up there. The other place that I actually really liked was Osaka. Osaka is also uh, on my list, I'm gonna say that, that that's probably number four, I'd say. There's not that many parks, but it is really nice for walking and it is clean. Um, so for number five, I'm gonna put Subic Bay. Right, Subic, definitely a beautiful place, triple canopy jungles, lots of parks, uh, no traffic, no traffic, no nonsense, no jeepneys, no trikes. Yes. That's a major benefit and in the villages like Binnictikin, it's one of the best places for walking. And actually, yeah. I might have to reevaluate this, but that, you know, of all on my list, you've probably got Singapore, Taipei, Tokyo, Osaka, Subic Bay. That's, that's about it for me. Yeah. And so much uh, for tourist stuff, there's a lot to do, right? Uh, yeah. Like, they have like a Sea World kind of thing here, right? Ocean uh, World, yeah. And the, the, the Zubik. Zubik. Yeah. Yeah. So you get in this car, it's got a cage around it, and tigers come out, and you can feed the tigers and lions and stuff. Yeah. Um, what is it, tigers and lions and bears? I know tigers. tigers I mean, lions and bears. No, I no. love that, but but I did it in Thailand, but I'm never going to do that again because I know I know in Thailand, uh, in general, I don't want to support zoos with my money. I just stay let them free. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of it. Yeah, but uh. Yeah, so I don't want to support that with my money, but it's something to do. Um, but you know, Taipei Zoo is a great place if you're looking and love animals. Yes, I'm not a fan of them caging animals, there's no doubt. Uh, look, you know, even my family, my parents are vegetarians, believe it or not. But, uh, you know, I, I don't like to see animals caged up, but Taipei Zoo is nice because, you know, they have big kind of like open spaces where they can roam and stuff. And mm -hmm. I like that. You can even see pandas in Taipei, in the Taipei Zoo, and it's like two or three dollars, um, you know, to enter the zoo. It's that cheap. It's really, really cheap. It's like, it was like two and a half dollars, like two dollars wow. fifty. It was really cheap. Taipei, is that in Taiwan? Taiwan, yeah, that's okay. the major city, the capital city. So are we Taiwan. on to entertainment? Yeah, yeah, I'll let you okay. read that one out. Oh, well, I guess for a single man, uh, a young single man. I'll, I'll just hold on this, sorry. This is not adult entertainment. This is just normal entertainment going out. <laughs> Maybe okay. cinemas. I was, um, was going to say... Uh, things to do. I was going to say party. Yeah. Theme parks right. like you were talking okay. about. Yeah, yeah, that one is another question which is that's, nightlife. That's a so different, different kind okay. of entertainment. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's a different kind of entertainment. Yeah. Okay, so uh, entertainment. Then you want to go with what's modernized and westernized, I guess. Depending on if your entertainment is more like nature oriented or... That's a good or point. Or history. Then you maybe want to go to uh, CM Reap and see uh, Angkor Wat. Uh, uh, that you know, if you like Indiana Jones type stuff in real life. CM Reap. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, that, that would be good. But for like city type of entertainment and culture, uh, Bangkok, I guess, uh, would be the most options and the most, uh, the biggest and like most developed of. I'm thinking south. I'm still thinking Southeast Asia. I'm not, I, I, but I guess you could get even more options in Japan or China or Singapore, especially. But uh, but I, I don't know those places. I only know Southeast Asia. Um, so All right, I've got mine. I've got mine. I'll go with uh, Bangkok for entertainment on on, on my number one. Uh, but I know that the other places have more options. Number one, my number one is Tokyo. Tokyo is a cool place, actually. There's so much to do there. Really, I really enjoy Tokyo. It's got something crazy, like 50 theme parks. Oh my yeah. god, that's insane. So like, there's something crazy like that. You've got theme parks, you've got things to do, uh, nice parks like your Yogi Park and this sort of thing. So entertainment, definitely I'm gonna say Tokyo is number one. Number two, actually this is an interesting one. And I'm not just talking about the whole city, but I'm talking about one district where I really, really enjoyed living, and I've lived in this city before, which is Shenzhen. So Shenzhen, China, there's a city, a small district um, called Shukou. Now Shukou is really, really good because, you know, to live there, it's a lot cheaper than neighboring uh, country of like Hong Kong or Macau. So accommodation's really cheap. But what's good about Shukou is they've got the port. So at the port, you can actually travel, okay? You can travel one hour to Hong Kong, on the ferry, one hour to Macau, and you're in Macau. So that's really, really cool. Okay, so I really like Shukou. Shukou 
Shenzhen, Shukou, was a really cool place to live. It was really awesome. Um, the other thing about it is lots to do, restaurants. Um, they have this really cool mall, actually, and they have this giant boat in the middle of the mall, and it looks like, it looks like um, a big, uh, what was that ship? The Titanic. It looks like the Titanic or something. It's huge. Uh, and the mall, this outdoor kind of entertainment area mall kind of revolves around that. They have these big walkways for walking. They've got lots of trails for hiking. Yeah. Hiking's a really good one. Lots yeah. of mountain trails. I and know so on. Japan has some really well-known ones too for, for that. Also, also they've got the speed train. So you can jump on the speed train in Shenzhen to go to Hong Kong, you can go to other cities in mainland China, you can take the metro link uh, to different areas in Shenzhen, and Shenzhen has some really, really cool places. Honestly, I love Shenzhen as a city. If I was gonna live in mainland China again, where I would live is Shenzhen. Hands down, wind. I wouldn't live in Beijing, too much pollution. Um, Shanghai is great, it's got a good expat community, but it's just not for me, I've lived there before. And uh, you know, I probably wouldn't be back. I like Shenzhen. Also, if I want to escape communist China, I can get out very quickly on on, on the the port and experience uh, a bit of more of Western Asia, like Hong Kong, for example. What, Good for business too. What city is that that you said? Shenzhen. Uh, Shenzhen. Oh, okay. Shenzhen. I, didn't, I didn't know that's that's close to great, a port. Great for shopping. Oh. Well, well, one district, one area is called uh, uh, Shuko, Shenzhen. The district is Shoko and you can mm. jump on the ferry there. So that's that's definitely mm. a really cool one. So Tokyo, actually, you know what? This is a tie for number one, Tokyo and Shenzhen. Okay. Yeah, so I'm, I, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Bangkok on my number one, but I know uh, for other people who have more of a budget and if you just strictly looking at entertainment, then you get more options in China or Japan uh, than you would in Southeast Asia. But depends what your cup of tea is, right? So, um, you know, that's a, that's a different. That's Someone a, said Ho Chi Minh. Huh? Ho Chi Minh. Huh, never. So I haven't actually been to Ho Chi Minh, so I can't really comment. Oh, what about Hong Kong? Hong Kong, I've spent a lot of time and I've lived and worked there. Huh. Hong Kong's great, but uh, yeah, actually, you know, I'm gonna put that probably as number number four. What Vanilla's a, number five. What do you think of Angeli? Somebody, Michael McGuire. Limited entertainment. Um, we're not talking about nightlife. That's, that's nightlife. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's a nightlife. So we'll probably put that in the nightlife section. I've never been there because I, I, that's not my thing anymore. I, that used to be my life. Like, but that's me either. Uh, me either. <laughs> yeah. So number five is it number five. Yep. Shopping and malls. So shopping and malls. Hmm. What's the number one? I would think uh, China or Japan, I would, I would think, but... Uh... Don't know about Japan, I'm, I really wouldn't say Japan, honestly. Huh. Actually, I think, maybe you're right when you say oh, yeah, China. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, I know, I've, I've read about this, that China has the top three biggest malls in the world. And, but uh... China is expensive when it comes to shopping. Oh, okay. Because there's lots of taxes in mainland China. Yes. Actually, Everybody. shopping, hands down, wins number one, Hong Kong. Okay. Oh. Yeah, Hong so this Kong. Is shopping in malls. Okay, yep. I'm gonna go with that, uh, but because I've been, I even did videos about this recently that uh, China has the uh, not recently, but Shenzhen uh, does have also some really cool malls uh, for like, um, like it's like one big mall. I forget the name, but it's like a mall that's like a market, and you can buy lots of like fake kind of goods and stuff. Mm. So in some way, I don't know Shenzhen or Hong Kong. I'm put. Hong Kong is number one because you can get a lot of good duty free stuff. Number two, I'm going to put Shenzhen. Okay. Yeah. And um, then I would say, so outside of China, I would just guess the, well, just based off of, uh, for shopping in malls, uh, just based off of my research that uh, Philippines has the next the next biggest malls in the world. Manila, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Manila, yeah. SM Mega Mall and SM North Edsa are both great. Uh, Moa, Mall of Asia, is a yeah. huge mall. I'm yeah. pretty sure it's like the biggest mall in the Southern Hemisphere. Located on the waterfront, on the bayfront, it's really nice for walking too. But uh, yeah. it was when it was first made, but uh, it's, it's now um, SM North Edsa is the biggest in the Philippines. I did not know that. And, and Mega Mall, really? Mega Mall is bigger. And um, I did not know that. I think uh, there might there's oh. another one in Cebu that's bigger than Mall of Asia now. Bangkok. 
have to put Bangkok for malls. Yeah, I love... It's uh, similar to Manila. What's yeah. it called? The C- Siam? Uh, one of the malls? Siam Paragon. Yes. Yeah, yeah Siam Paragon. Yeah. And I like... Uh, what's the other one? The big one in, in, in Bangkok? Ah... Um, uh, uh, MDK? So MBK, MBK has got some cheap goodies there. Yeah, I like MBK. Replica stuff. My, yeah. f- my favorite restaurant in all of Thailand was at MBK. Which was, one's that? It was on the ground floor. I'm trying to... Th- Oasis. Oasis MBK. It was my favorite. Best food I've ever had in Thailand. I don't like restaurants, but that was the best... My favorite restaurant in Thailand. And I think Thailand has the best food. Terminal 21. So Terminal yes. 21, someone yeah. mentioned. Yep, but Terminal there are a lot. 21 is cool. Yeah. Yep. My ex-wife's uh, sister worked there when we first started dating. And I lived in, uh, I lived on uh, Sukhumvit, so we were there a lot, you know. Uh, uh, so let, let's move on to the next one, because we do have 25 questions. Number six, public transport and infrastructure. This think, is a hard one. I would think it's... Just, I haven't been there, but I would, I would guess Japan or China. I would probably ch- ch- would think, ch- I would think Japan would be, be, because China is so crowded. I would just guess Japan. But which city? So, I think China does win, mm-hmm. and I'll tell you why it wins. Hello, speed trains. So the great thing is, you can get cheap flights. You can get um, speed trains from the airports direct from the airports to other cities. So instead of driving for three or four hours, you jump on a speed train and, you know, 300, 400 kilometers an hour, you can be in a city that's 400 kilometers away oh. in an hour, right? So how much faster is that than like the elevated train in Bangkok? How much, uh, would you guess, uh, how much faster is oh, it? Oh, 10 times mm-hmm. faster. I mean, that, that oh. little MRT, I mean, look, look, <laughs> compare apples with apples. Um, they do have like a subway uh, system in China as well, uh, in different cities. When I was living in Hangzhou in China, they were just bringing on the metro there. So I missed that. So it was kind of annoying because I used to have to get around on a bicycle or just walk all the time. Um, that's what I would do. Mm-hmm. But since I've left, they've actually got a metro and most cities, like even Shenzhen, have good metro. So what I'm going to say, actually, the best for public transport in infrastru- and infrastructure is again, it, it's a battle between Shenzhen and Shanghai because Shenzhen has speed trains, it's got airports, it's got you know good clean roads, it's got a ferry, etc. So, even just saying that, I think oh. yeah, number one, Shenzhen, and number two, I'm actually going to put Shanghai. I have a lot of uh, 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 associates or uh, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, acquaintances in China that. Uh, that uh, they've, they've mentioned Shenzhen to me a lot, but I didn't, I didn't really know how good it was. Uh, I never looked into it, uh, but I'm learning a lot about it today. Uh, Japan is not so good. It is good, but the system is older. Also, like some of it is just a bit complicated because, you know, like I'll give you an example. We almost missed our flight, okay? Did we, I say Japan? I meant China, acquaintances in China. Ch- China and Japan, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, same, same, but different. (laughs) But look, what I was going to say is actually we were trying to get our flight back from Osaka to Manila and we talked to the the station master, one of the guys at the station, which is the track. They said go to line two, the red line two, and there's too many lines. It's all very confusing actually. Yeah. So we went to line two and he said take that train. So we jumped on that train. What he didn't tell us is it's on that track but there's different actual trains on that track. So that train that we got onto took us to a place called Wakayama. And luckily we left three hours before our flight, but we we got taken on an express train to another city outside bloody Osaka. And we almost (laughs) missed our flight. Actually, we went all the way to Wakayama and had to pay to go back to um, Osaka airport. And, you know, what we were told is, hey, look, if you'd been one or two minutes late, you would have missed your flight and had to rebook. So I was like, oh, my God. That was an experience. So um, definitely wasn't happy with that. But look, the trains are cool. They definitely are really cool. So number three, I will still put Tokyo, for example. Um, Definitely good transport links. We've got speed trains as well in Tokyo and Osaka and other major cities in Japan. So I'd say Tokyo and then probably Osaka. Mm. Number five, I'll have to think about that one. 
Uh, I would just guess for, for the top top and transport and infrastructure. I would just guess China or Japan, and you just confirmed it. But yeah. out of where I've been, I would say um, Bangkok has a lot of uh, choices for for a, a lot of development for transportation. But um, Phnom Penh is easier to get around than Bangkok or Manila because Phnom Penh is so much smaller than both. Oh, really? Yeah, it's. It's it's a, it's the biggest city in capital, but but it's like it's a it's a small town compared to those these two, so it's like I really enjoyed Phnom Penh, especially when I first came before the Chinese invasion. Um, so uh, it, the transportation is very easy to get around in Phnom Penh. Uh, Phnom Penh, all right. Yeah, well, it's, I might it's a put fun that place. there because look, I don't know. I haven't been to Phnom Penh. I actually like the transport links in Bangkok. I'm, actually, yeah. I'm going to put Bangkok for number five. Yeah. They've got like really nice SkyTrain, BTS, MRT, and also Skywalks. Definitely not Manila. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely not. That, that would be on the list of, you know, for transportation and infrastructure, probably the worst on the yeah. list. Yeah. Oh man, I did a lot of videos of that and showing it. Uh, but uh, when I first did it, it was just fun for, as like an adventure. But uh, yeah. if you're if you're just looking to get somewhere, it really is a god awful. But I use Grab Taxi to go everywhere in Manila. Grab yeah. Taxi all yeah. the time. I wish they had that here. They have no uh, they have no meters on the taxis here in uh, sure. uh Now this is, next one is actually really tough. Business opportunity. Where has in Asia, where has the number one best business opportunity? And we're going to have to rush through this because, like, I think that's question number seven or something. I'm going to go with uh, uh, Phnom Penh. Uh, oh, yep. sorry. Uh, I would go with uh, somewhere in Cambodia. I don't know if it's Phnom Penh necessarily, but maybe Siem Reap. But yep. um, it's just changing so rapidly with the Chinese invasion. It used to be the best way because you could own everything. All really? You, you, you wouldn't need a partner. Uh, wow. Over there. Uh, you can, a lot of freedom. Um, I, uh, I made a video discussing all these uh, in detail called Cambodia Single Dance Paradise. But uh, it's really just after I made that is when the Chinese invasion happened. So everything's changing very quickly. But I would still think that it would be the best place to own your own business and not have to have a, a local as a partner it would be Cambodia. Um, uh, but I'm not sure exactly what city. I guess have to think about it. Maybe Siem Reap uh, because it's still kind of small and uh, more opportunity for growth. But um, or Kampot or Kep. But then of course the capital is Phnom Penh. So uh, and Siem Reap used to be good, but it's totally taken over by Chinese casinos. So for me, Philippines wins. Number one, Subic Bay. Number two, Clark. Number three, Manila. The reason I'm voting for that is because a lot of people don't know Subic Bay and Clark Pampanga are free port zones. So actually, for certain industries, you can own 100% owned WUFI, wholly owned foreign enterprise in the free ports. And the other benefit too is it's tax-free, so tax-free zone. Ah. So that wins hands down okay. for me. I'm taking that to number one. Yeah, Subic Bay, Clark, and then Manila. You've got PESA, the Philippine Economic Zone Authority, in Manila, you've got the free port um, zones in Subic Bay and Clark. So, for example, SBMA. Oh, I didn't, I didn't even know that because it's just not something I'm going to... Well, that leads to question eight, which is foreign investment and tax-free zone, which again, for me, is the exact same in yeah. Subic Bay, Clark, and then Manila. Yeah. It's the exact same. Um, number four is actually probably some smaller city in Thailand because, for two reasons, number one, Americans... Actually, under the American treaty with Thailand, Americans are the only people outside of Thai nationals who can legally own a 100% own company without Thai directors in Thailand. Were you aware of that? They can do that. This is it for work and employment? Or no, no, for foreign investment oh, and tax-free okay. zones. Thailand. Actually, under the treaty, the American and Thai treaty, Americans can own 100% companies, whereas most places like... Um, you know, Philippines, most industries are restricted and you can only own 40% of a company and need five uh, directors, which is changing in the Philippines, I've heard, okay? Huh. Uh, someone actually, uh, yep, that's right, Amity Treaty. So he's, I'm referring to the Amity Treaty, the Amity Treaty between Thailand and America. So that's a big thing for Americans 
but you know it's not so great if you're European, Aussie, or British, etc. It's not so great. Ariane says Taiwan for me. Taiwan, okay, Taiwan's probably a good one. Right, I'm gonna put, I'm probably gonna say uh, Bangkok number four because of that Amity Treaty. What? And also the Board of Investment, BOI, in Thailand will grant you special status and give you 100% ownership, even if you're not an American, but you need to have a really good uh, investment and business idea, be willing to invest a sizable amount of money, and you could possibly get an approval based out of the uh, BOI, the Board of Investment in Thailand. So I'm going to say Bangkok and Pattaya. Okay, I'm going to go with you on that. It's just not something I've looked into. Uh, my my sure. only thing is I'm, I want to write a book. That's my only interest in... Um, it's already written. I just need to publish it. That's so, right. So uh, that's, that's the only interest in my business. But um, what's BTS? BTS, BTS like the Sky Train in, in oh, Bangkok. Yeah. Okay, okay. Francis Harford. The, the uh, super chatter is Francis yeah. Harford. <laughs> Work and employment. Huh. Um, what do you reckon? Well, I guess um, I would think Subic. Um, I know that it's, it's otherwise in Southeast Asia. I don't know um, the more expensive countries. I haven't even thought about that because I don't want to go. Uh, Japan and China, I haven't even thought about it. But I know Southeast Asia, and I know that really you're, you're pretty much out of luck in most places. You, your best thing is just teaching English. But uh, That's true. So like, <laughs> Except... One place that I do know about, well not one place, actually there's multiple places. China, yes, like you're saying, most of the jobs teaching English. Japan, same kind of thing, there's very few opportunities. But the one city that I do know that has other opportunities, a lot of opportunities, a lot of foreign investment and foreign companies is Manila. So definitely, hands down, number one for work and employment is going to be Manila. Okay. It's not the greatest city to live because of traffic and it's getting more expensive for accommodation, but it's not that expensive. And, you know, Manila, lots of work opportunities. Uh, there's banks, telcos from Europe, from America, from Australia that have outsourced and set up uh, there. Even, even you've got Google there now. Google's set up there. In Manila? Yeah, oh, in Manila. Yeah. Google has an office and there's people wow. working for Google now. So how cool is that? You could work for Google in Manila. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, but but Subic for owning your own business, would you say Subic and Clark and Manila are the top? Absolutely. So then that's kind of also tied in with, with employment, I would think, work and employment. Well, if you want to own one your being business, if you're a business owner, oh. is question seven. So you want to work. Question nine is work, employment, if you just want to be oh. employee. Uh, okay. an employee and get a paycheck every week, huh. you know, some secure employment. I, I reckon Manila is the yeah. best. It's the easiest. Yeah, okay. Subic I like, but I've got to be honest, Subic is really hard to find jobs for mm. foreigners. Really hard. Um, most people that come here have their own business. I did do a video recently on jobs for expats. We're going to open a new branch office. Our call center, it's not my call center. It's about, you know, four or five hundred strong out of Manila. But they've decided to open a branch office in Subic Bay. And we do have jobs going. Actually, I've just been informed that we're going to have jobs going for credit offices. Not loan writers, credit offices. So people that actually do the loan processing of the loans and issue the credit. So we're going to have jobs for uh, that role as well. Nice. Yeah. Um, so how long is your battery going to last? Is it going to die like not, it did last not time? Not sure. Not no, sure. I still have that portable battery. Well, we'll keep on going. We'll have to burn through the last questions. I'm going to answer so this, the other cities for work and employment safety, later. Safety and peace of mind. Yeah. Is easy. That's where we are now. That's why we're. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. I mean, we're we're here because this is the top for almost mo a lot of these categories. That's why we're here. So yeah, it's going to be at the top of most of these because we're both guys that have been around and it took us a long time to find what we wanted. Yep. And so this is going to be the top of the list in many of these areas. So yes, yeah, safety, peace of mind is a hundred percent Subic Bay. Yeah. Look, um, statistics don't lie, and the stats said not last year because we did actually have a little bit of a crime wave in Subic last year. Um, there were a few murders and stuff, which is terrible, but since then the government has actually hired private security and tightened security.
Prior to last year, though, actually the stats were that, like, actually in the Philippines, Subic Bay Freeport Zone in the Freeport for many years was the safest city to live uh, for low violence and low crime in the Philippines. So you don't see people on drugs here, so you even, don't see homeless, you don't see that stuff. Definitely not. Even, even with the, the murders, would, would, it, would it still be statistically like way safer than other places? I, I couldn't tell you because it's really hard to find up to date statistics. But I did previously find stats showing me that the safest city uh, prior was Subic Bay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's another thing that's more more important to uh, retirees. Like, but exactly. A young adventurer. You don't really. You, you when you hear about danger, you're like danger is my middle name. No thanks. Not when you're 60, mate. You just want to relax. Jeez, you want, don't want to be getting in in pub fights and you know 60. Oh come on, young man, let's go. <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm not being violent. I'm just joking around, guys. I've never been so that. So coffee, three, whoa, whoa. I've never been that way. Uh, but like, uh, but yeah, it's just like that's more like a a, a concern of a retiree. Um, yeah. But I know, I know that Subic is the top of the list after being here overseas for four and a half years straight. Uh, it's the top of my list for safety. Uh, I would think maybe next to just guess. Um, I don't know Japan and China, so I'm just gonna go with Phuket, uh, my number two, for what I know. Uh, yeah, sure, Phuket. Um, I'd probably say maybe Kosanui. I'm gonna put Kosanui. Mm, that could be. Kosanui is a quiet, nice place. Nice peaceful place. I'm gonna put. I did, I and Phuket. I'll put Phuket. There. I didn't. I didn't go to the tourist places because I've, for the past four years, I've avo avoided especially tourists, but other Westerners. But now I'm ready to live around Westerners again, and that's one reason why I came to Subic. Uh, there's a lot of uh, Westerners here, right? or a lot of uh, foreigners. All right, let's start to rush through this a bit quick. Yeah. Uh, faster. I uh, guess it's also start, top yeah. of the list. Uh, Subic. Yeah, leads us to the next one: local community. Friendly locals, definitely suit yes. us. I, I got on the Facebook page for my for my neighborhood. There's a Facebook page, a very welcoming, Benic Ticken. Uh, yeah. And uh, and Kelly on uh, community Facebook page. Yeah. So yeah. strong community here. Yeah. Yeah. And really like banding together to uh, keep keep the security people on their on their toes. Keep make sure they're doing their job and um, warning each other about traffic and. Um, uh, smoke, if you see some pollution, people always talking about these things on the pages. And people are really uh, keeping the, making sure it's it's up to par, you know. <laughs> so next one, dating and relationships. What do you reckon? Uh, I'm I'm gonna go with what I know. So sure. either Bangkok or Manila. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Bang on. <laughs> I'm probably gonna say Manila because that's where I found the love of my life. I am. Oh. Hope she's watching to hear that. And yeah, then wasn't Bangkok. The, wasn't this her? Isn't this her in the chat Yeah, box? that's her. Okay. Also, uh, Shenzhen. Shenzhen. Some pretty girls there, some oh. nice girls there. Uh, ones that are well educated, speak English, that sort of thing. Alright, so question 13. Beaches, islands, or coves? Hmm. Um, gotta go with Philippines for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, that's definitely Boracay. I think so. I haven't been there, but I have to guess that that. Would, but except uh, the hole. Okay. Yeah, Boracay. I, I've only been to Manila and and Subic now in the Philippines uh, because I didn't until now. I never had a budget, and now I have cats to take care of, so I'm probably not going to be traveling for any time soon. But uh, yeah. But yeah, I just I've done the research. I've done a lot of research on these things, and I know Philippines just takes the cake when it comes to beaches, islands, and yeah. coves. It just Wins beats everybody for that. So I'm Thailand gonna would be next, right? Boracay, Bohol, Palawan, then probably Kosanui and Phuket. That's, okay. that's what I'm going to say there. Okay, Boracay is number one. Four. All right, number fourteen. Okay, number fourteen is airport and flight specials. This is easy for me. Um, Swanapum hmm. Airport. Okay. Yeah. Swanapum yeah, Bangkok. Right. Yeah. What's the what's the three letter abbreviation? BKK. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, BKK. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, then I would probably say Manila, the airport's not so good, but you can get some really good flight specials. So mm. that's probably number four, five on my list. <laughs> um, I would I would put at the very bottom, like not on the list anywhere, would be um, Viet, anything in Vietnam. I had a problem with Vietnam. Oh, um, really? That's one place I want to go, but I had scheduled a layover in Vietnam when I moved here to Manila yep. uh, from Cambodia. And uh, I found out on the day of the flight, I found out, and I already had it booked, and I found out that I need to get a visa in advance. Oh, yeah, you do. That's just, just for a layover. China, you need a visa too, yeah. so that's the annoying yeah. thing about China. China's a lot harder <laughs> to get a visa. I believe Vietnam, you can go online. And do some yeah, okay. e visa, which is good. Yeah. I probably could have gotten it that day, but I just didn't know anything about it, and I didn't have time to. Uh, so I just I had to rechange change my plans, and I lost like an extra five hundred dollars because of that. And uh, um, so yeah, it's like it's the least convenient. Oh, number two, that's easy. Bangkok's my number one. Number two is Hong Kong Airport, Hong Kong International Airport. Huh. Number three, thinking about it, I think Manila would be down around number four because look, I don't really like the airport much, but they have really good flight specials and Clark is opening a new airport, which is really cool. Very, very cool. So yeah, let's move on. Question number but they've 15. they've had one for a while, right? They, they have had an airport there. They do, open. but mate, they're going to open. If you've seen the construction, it's got like this really nice wavy kind of roof. Oh. They're going to expand the airport, so that's good news. Mm -hmm. Number 15, the best city to live for cultural experience. Okay. Thailand. Yeah. China. Uh, I would first think Thailand, but uh, I'm also thinking... Um... Cambodia maybe? Cambodia, like, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, Siem Reap? Angkor, yeah. Siem Reap. Siem Reap. I'm gonna Siem. go with that. I've yeah. heard good things. Yeah. After Siem Reap, what do you think? Some city in Thailand? Maybe yeah, Chiang Mai? Yeah. Uh, they have, they have Doi ruins. Satep. They do have ruins there, right? It, yeah. Is Chiang Mai where the... The canals, they've got the old canals. Oh. They've got a temple by the name of uh, Doi Satep. Yeah. Um, e even Patti actually has some really nice temples there too, actually. So that's that's on my list. Patti, I'm going to say, you know, it's, it's number three. No, actually, you know what? I'm going to put number three is Bangkok and number four, Patti. Mm -hmm. And what did we say was uh, number number two was Chiang Mai. Okay. Yeah. And then number five. Hard one. I'm going with China, a Chinese city, or a Japanese city. Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll think about that one. I'll have to I would think, think Japan that. just because I, I don't. Japan, Japan, I think you're right. China's too crowded for me. I don't, that's why reason I don't want to go. I know what it is. Cultural experience, Japan. You must go to Kyoto. Kyoto. Mm. I'm actually going to put that as number three. Okay. Kyoto, and then Bangkok, and then Pattaya. So then, uh, food is a different category, right? That's not part of this culture no, experience. No. Yeah. Oh yes. well, yes, it could be because okay. culture, different cuisines, yeah. food, temples. Yeah, I, I think it could be, mate. Yeah. Okay. Well, then Thailand is to me is the best food in the world. It's so <laughs> good. <laughs> not gonna lie. <laughs> I like. Um, uh, I forgot what it's called now. I'm drawing a blank about. Uh, Hainan. Someone said Hainan and Bali. Probably not in my top five, but yeah, still great places. Mm. So question number 16, just burning through these now. Grocery shopping, this is a tough one. Mm. Well, Subic has some good grocery shopping, imported items, duty-free shopping, yeah. so it's somewhere in, in, in the top there. Because of the duty-free aspect. Yeah, duty-free is good. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually gonna put that as, well, what, what's better than for grocery shopping, what well, there's got to be something better than Subic Bay. Uh, because of the duty free, that would put it high in the running. But just because Thailand has the best food in the world, I would also think Thailand, Bangkok, uh, or Pattaya, because Pattaya has yeah. got a lot of choices when it comes to different supermarkets. Yeah, new right. malls that are yeah. opening, and Pattaya is less crowded, so I might go with Pattaya. Pattaya, first. yeah, yeah, they do have a lot of malls, a lot of grocery shopping. Pattaya, then Subic. I'm gonna put. Uh, pod Kripal. I used to eat Pod Kripal every day. That's my favorite food. Uh, well, sorry. Mango sticky rice. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting uh, hungry. I haven't had brekkie, mate. Oh. 
I had a little can, one of those CLA tuna over there. I had one. I thought that can. was for the kids. No, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> tuna and peanuts every day. Good. Except for yesterday, I went. I Friday, Friday is my cheat day, and um, uh, Army Navy. You need a cheat little, day. <laughs> yeah, I eat like a, I had uh, uh, twelve donuts just for me yesterday. A Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> I need food, mate. Really. <laughs> Okay, so we'll, we'll keep thinking about the other places for grocery shopping, maybe somewhere in Cambodia. That's Restaurants nice. and e eateries. Definitely Thailand. Where? Bangkok? Um, I think so. Bangkok. Yeah. Because they options, most options for that. Yeah. And you can do it any hour of the night. Number two for me is Taipei. Okay. I don't know. <clears throat> Taipei. And then I have to think about the rest. My food, favorite food in the world is Thai food, but Pak or Pao Gai is what I would eat every day, and I'm very, very happy to eat it. Guys, mass, mass man curry, oh, love my mass man, that, a beef mass man with beef and potatoes. Thai? Yes, Thai man. Oh, okay. Yeah, mass man. Uh, also, uh, what's the good soup there? Uh, Tom Yum. Yeah, yes, yes. Tom Yum. Tom Yum Goom. Yeah. Uh, Tom and the other thing about Thailand, mm. I don't know, it's probably Bangkok or Patty. Patty is up there too. Not only Thai food, but there's so many foreigners living in Thailand that they open a German restaurant, an English pub. Vegan. Yeah, yeah there's an old Patty. My dad's a vegetarian and he loved it. Surprisingly, I had no idea. But there's like 10 or 12 vegetarian restaurants. He absolutely loved it because, you know, he's eating all this vegan and vegetarian food yeah. in, in Patty. Also, Bangkok. Also, Bangkok has a lot of vegetarian oh. restaurants. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Even even where I lived in Cambodia, you could get uh, go to a certain area of um, that was in Phnom Penh, uh, and you get you get anything Japan, uh, Japanese, sorry, Japanese, Italian, vegan. Uh, so any of these bigger cities, you can find anything you want. But I know that. Um, Thailand, objectively, especially for me, but for most people would agree that Thailand has the best food in the world. So I gotta go with um, Bangkok for Bangkok, then I would go with um, one of the popular, maybe um, uh, Phuket or Koh Samui for, uh, uh, even though I haven't been to them, but uh, sure. I would think they would have the most like specialized like uh, chefs in, in the more richer areas like that. Sure, sure. Um, so number 18, internet. Not Philippines, but maybe... Uh, maybe Subi Bay Subi, internet yeah, maybe is Subi very Subi. good, but it's not in the top. One, two, three. Number one, Tokyo. Definitely Tokyo and Osaka, number two for me. Number for three, three is Seoul. I heard the internet in Korea is amazing. Like Manila would be one of the worst. Um, Cebu is not very good. Surprisingly, and this is number four for me, Subic Bay for internet, because it's the one place, and this is honestly probably one of the main reasons why I moved to Subic Bay, I need good internet. Yeah. And the internet is solid here. You can get a solid fiber connection here in Subic Bay. Because the thing is, instead of you know working on a shared node in a condominium development of 500 apartments, here you can get your own uh, house and have your own direct DSL or fiber internet connection. So that's why you know we've got a really good connection here in Subic. So that's number four uh, on my list. I have to think about number number five, probably somewhere like uh, Singapore. Oh uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Singapore. Singapore for sure. Yeah, Say, the, the for places I've been, um, Thailand for. For where I've been, uh, I've got to go with Thailand. But I know for a fact, objectively speaking, all those ones you just said, uh, China, Singapore especially. Um, China, no. Not at all because of the Great Firewall. You uh, can't get to YouTube, you can't get to Google, all of this stuff. Right. <laughs> when I was living in China, this was my biggest dislike, thumbs down for mainland China, is the Great Firewall and not being able to interact with my friends back home. So that was yeah. a problem. They, they can't watch YouTube, right? Is that right? right? China? No, you can't. <laughs> oh. It's firewall, so you can't get to it without a v VPN or a proxy. Uh, okay, question number 19. Expat community. Subic. Subic. <laughs> Hands down. Number two. Let, let's think about number two. What's number two? Um, Phnom Penh. I would say Phnom Penh. Phnom. Great uh, expat community. I mean, 
uh, very legendary uh, expat community, but uh, a lot of expats in Pattaya. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Pattaya. Yes. Bangkok too. Yes. And then I'd probably say. Is Bali on the list? Actually, you know, I wouldn't put Bali. Uh, definitely wouldn't put Bali for mm -hmm. living. Uh, for tourism, a lot of tourists, but not that many people living what, there. What is the thing about that place? Why, why do people like, I haven't, I haven't been there. What, what is uh, actually, you know what? Number two for me, Subic, but number two is Taipei. I'll okay. tell you why, I read a report, and the report was saying that the happiest expats for living and working in, in a city in Asia, I read a report that actually said Taipei, Taiwan. Mm. So Taipei is number two. And I would also put uh, CM, CM Reap or, or Kam Pat yep. uh, for, for um, uh, Cambodia. Cool. Um, cool. Uh, renting property. Renting property. Civic. Uh, I'm thinking. I'm thinking, well, sorry, that's, that's good for owning. But, um, yes, I agree. <laughs> it's not as good as it used to be for renting. Actually, yeah. some of the hotels that used to do monthly stays and this sort of thing of in the Freeport have been bought out yeah. and oh, okay. I'm not going to say you know who's know. bought them out you know what I'm talking about let's not comment there so I know what I'm going to pick though is for sure because I've lived in hotels for two years yeah. in Cambodia it's very easy and very yep. cheap I lived in hotels nothing but hotels for two years uh, I'm picking Pattaya mate Pattaya okay. there's, there's yes. a, a there's huge fun. amount of apartments yeah, and houses so available at the moment yeah, and so you can cheaper. find some great places for like four or five hundred US dollars per month yeah. you can get a really nice one or two bedroom apartment with pool and facilities so definitely Pattaya for me that'll be my number it's not my top five uh, uh, I'm gonna go with uh, SR um, and a couple in Cambodia Sam Reap yeah yep and then Pattaya will be my number five okay uh, I don't. I can't really say because I've never actually just been for, to for Canada. price. For price. But yeah, look, I definitely know Patia. Manila's. Don't even think it's on the top five. No. I'd say, unfortunately, look, you can still get a nice house, a rental for a house for Subic. I'm going to put it at like number four though, because honestly, like I was saying earlier, a lot of the hotels that did monthly stays for like fifteen, twenty thousand pesos a month have increased their prices to like. 40,000 a month. An example was my friend went to Mango Valley the other day and I know that there were rooms there for like 15 to 20,000 a month and he looked for a room and they're like, yeah, 40. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. For 40,000 you can rent a nice villa like this. Now yeah. I'm not gonna show you around right, right now but this is a nice place, really yeah. nice. And yeah. they're very quiet and uh, safe and it's like, it, it's a place made by Westerners, for Westerners, and uh, you know, it's the US Navy made this, it was all US Navy officers, so it's all very Western style. Western and, style housing. And so quiet, that's, yeah, like, that's quiet. the most important thing to me at this point. Private security too, which yeah. is great. But uh, oh, for yeah. renting, uh, I gotta say that uh, um, because out of where I've been, that I think that Phil Philippines overall, not not counting Subic so much, but that Philippines overall is, is very bad for renting. Uh, I agree. Yeah. A, a lot of the stuff is very overpriced for and renting. The, and the internet is bad when you're in a hotel. Good for <laughs> buying because you know you can buy a property cheap and then let it out and get a good return on investment. So a good uh, internal rental return. So you could get as much as, I, I know some of my properties were yielding 10, 11, 12% net, which mm -hmm. is huge. Yeah. I, gotta, I gotta grab this little device that we have over here. Sure, I'll, I'll keep going. Well, I'll, I'll talk about the next one, which is buying property. What's this device? So this, um, if you really need internet and you want to travel the world, I got this thing called the Glocal Me. Glocal Me. G3. Wow. And I just tried it because the internet went out like a week, maybe two weeks ago. And um, it works great. So you cool. can go anywhere in the world and uh, uh, the hotels and wow, look how big that is! It looks yeah. like a giant iPhone. So this is a uh, this <laughs> is that's the biggest drawback of this this brand. Uh, it's a little bit big. Looks cool though. Uh, and uh, but you get internet guaranteed no matter where you are in the world. Is it is it expensive? Um, <clears throat> pardon me. I I don't. Uh, 
I don't think so. No, it's. Huh? Um, I can't. I, I don't remember the exact prices, but uh, but you could you, you get on the application and top up on cool. the application. But uh, yeah, I'll you can get this. Yeah. Oh, nice. And uh, that was. I did a lot of research, and that was like the best model. I mean. Yeah, the, the, the only drawback, I, I looked at, the best website for the information I found is called too many adapters.com and they did too many adapters. Yeah, they did a review of, of all the best uh, wireless hotspot devices because I knew I had to do my nightly business meetings here uh, when I was searching for apartments so I couldn't take the chance on the hotel Wi-Fi, which ended up being great. Everywhere else I've been in, in, in Manila, just terrible hotel Wi-Fi's but here, I know. here it's, it's bad <laughs> yeah that's a real problem the internet is not the best in the Philippines so you gotta be yeah. careful but here it's great it's super especially good. data internet oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay so buying property we're talking about buying property hands here. down super. super pay because you can have a leasehold property a house on a 50 year lease a hundred percent in your own name as a foreigner. Number two, I'm gonna put Clark Pampanga, because again, you can do the same thing. You can also own 100% uh, units, uh, condominiums in Philippines and Thailand. So Patia at the moment, Clark's really popular at the moment, so it's number two. Number three is Patia. And number four, I'm gonna put as Cebu. I'm gonna agree with you on all those. Cause, cool. Uh, I know you've done the research, and I know- uh, Exactly. Yeah, otherwise buying property is like other places is pretty much guaranteed you cannot do it without a, without a local partner. Exactly, and that's the issue. And you don't so, want to do that. If you're going to do it, it's not smart to... It's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Look, you might be best of friends one day and enemies the next. Yeah. Yeah, especially when it comes to business, you know. Yeah. Business is business. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, There's yeah. not a lot of in business, really. <laughs> no. Okay, 22, quality medical facilities and healthcare cover. So, that, that for, is uh, hard. For me, here, because of the VA, but the VA, yeah. for anybody else, I would say Bangkok. I would do from, not counting China or Japan, I don't know them. Not 100% so, on China, man. Southeast Asia, uh, I gotta say Bangkok. Uh, not so sure on Japan for health. Okay. I think Bangkok. I'm going to go with Bangkok. Yeah, I mean, people fly out of their way just to go to Bangkok. Yes, they do. To, That's to true. Do <laughs> even, so Bangkok. even for uh, dental work or plastic surgery, people will go just to Bangkok just to do these things. I'm actually going to put Manila there because there are some really good hospitals like St. Luke's, yes. for example. Now, St. Luke's is really expensive, okay? We've also got Medical City in Makati and Ortigas. But the thing is, you can get good healthcare cover in the Philippines. It's cheap. It's like a thousand dollars plus a year, and you can have healthcare cover. And I personally got it, and that's included in my work package. But you know, I get that cover, and honestly, it's great. I I can go to St. Luke's, and it's totally free. My friend actually went to St. Luke's recently and he got his own private room in St. Luke's in BGC, which is a great location, and that was 100% covered. He didn't have to pay anything. He was in the hospital for like three or four days. What is BTC again? BGC. Oh, BGC. Fort, okay. Fort Bonifacio. And had he not had healthcare cover, and healthcare cover is really, really important, had he not had that, apparently it was gonna cost like 15,000 US dollars for the surgery, and also, it was a minor surgery, and also for the stay yeah. in in the, uh, the hospital, St. Luke's. Well, I gotta say, if you're a U.S. military veteran, VA. this is far and away uh, Manila, or uh, mostly overall, just uh, Philippines is where you, so you're far and away the only option and, and the best for sure. And you're covered, uh, so that's why I'm here. The the other thing too. Look, Bangkok's great, but what Bangkok doesn't have, and some of, some of the staff are educated and speak English, don't get me wrong, but you know, in Manila, it's just so nice. If you're sick and you're not well, you want to be able to speak to someone that speaks your language, that speaks English. Yep. You know, what happens if you were dying? It's like, I'm, I'm dying. You've got to tell them 
what the problem is. What happens if you're in China or Japan, they just don't understand you yeah. and it's lost in translation and because they don't know what's going on or they can't translate, that can be a bit scary. Yeah, and, yeah. and uh, English is, the, is actually considered a national la language of the Philippines, right? Yeah, absolutely, so, absolutely. I like this next category, for sure I'm going with uh, Cambodia, for sure. Cheap beer and yeah. alcohol, man. Yeah. Honestly, Subic Bay again wins. No, I take that back. I take that back. Oh no, hold on, what's cheaper? Angeles City or Subic for beer? No, Subic is cheaper. It's like 40 to 50 peso a beer in some of the, the bars and that sort of thing. So oh. Subic's number one. Number two is AC. But AC for on. cheap beer and alcohol is oh. number 23, question 23. I gotta go with for cheap beer and alcohol. For what I've experienced, um, that uh, Cambodia will take all one through five for me. But uh, Okay, uh, next is Cambodia, I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna go with uh, just... Oh my dog! Oh uh, Phnom, <laughs> Phnom Penh will be my number one, and then Siem Reap, and then uh, yeah. yeah. What about nightlife, clubs, pubs, and bars? Pattaya. 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 <laughs> I love you, ma ma. Absolutely. Number one, I'm gonna say Pattaya. Number yeah. two, I'm gonna actually say Manila. Uh, number three is Bangkok. Number four is AC. Okay. I'm going pretty close. I'm going to go uh, Pattaya, uh, Bangkok, and then Manila. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Pattaya, Pattaya Manila, uh, and then Bangkok for me. Bangkok. You've got casinos in Manila. You don't have casinos in Bangkok, for example. Ah, I'm going to go with uh, Pattaya, Bangkok, and Phnom Penh for uh, my number three. Bangkok. Then uh, AC. AC's up there. Angeles City. And actually, I think this is the first time. I really mention AC or Clark outside of one other question, which was airports. What's AC? Uh, Angeles City. Oh, okay. Angeles City, yeah. Hotels. Yeah, someone said Angeles as well, definitely. Oh. Okay, so last one is hotels and resorts. Last question, guys. Right here. Um, yeah, lots of cheap hotels and resorts, definitely. Patty, again, Patty is up there today. Uh, <laughs> Bangkok. Bangkok has huge amount of hotels, but a bit more expensive than Pattaya. Um, definitely, I'm not even gonna put Manila in my top five, because you know what? I found hotels to be really expensive yeah. in Man Manila, like especially luxury five-star hotels. Like, oh. I can get a luxury five-star in, in Bangkok or Pattaya, versus, you know, Manila, the same hotel, it'll be like 200 US plus, plus, okay? Mm -hmm. like. You know, plus city tax, plus VAT, this sort of thing. So I'm not really happy with that. Um, hotels and resorts. Macau, I like, but Macau's really expensive. I'm gonna put that down as number like five. Mm -hmm. Macau I found really expensive, but Macau has some really cool hotels and resorts, really cool hotels and resorts. Mm -hmm. uh, nice theme hotels and that sort of thing, casinos. Uh, what else? I don't know, I just Maybe think- Phuket. Um, yeah, just uh, I, would, I would go with Thailand for my top top exactly. three for sure. So yeah. probably um, Phuket. I'm thinking uh, Thailand for 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 price that Philippines just rips you off on hotel prices. So yeah, they're too high. Yeah, way too high uh, comparatively. So I just got to go with um, uh, Thailand. Will take all my Thailand. top five. Yeah. Thailand's my top three. I've got Macau in there. Apart from that, not not too sure. Um, yeah, probably Macau. Uh, Hong Kong's cool too, but yeah, way overpriced and very small rooms. Macau at least has bigger rooms, lots to do, so Macau's definitely up there. Yeah, Thailand is like, it's great for being a tourist, but they want you to spend your money and then get out. They don't want you to stay. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, Someone said Bahol. Actually, I'm going to put that on the list. I'm going to put that as number five as Bahol. Some beautiful resorts out there in Bahol, Philippines, and beaches too. Yeah, yeah. Francis, Francis Harford says, Patia, $30 Aussie with a pool, hard to beat. Hard to beat, definitely. What, do you mean, what does he mean, Aussie? Aussie dollars. Oh, okay. Yeah, which oh. is cheap. It's like 20 US at the moment. Yeah. 22, maybe 21, something like that. 21.50, I think. Well, we made it without the, without the battery. Anyway, right? that's 25 questions. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I need to get some lunch. I'm bloody hungry. Oh, <laughs> so hungry. I struggled through that. I didn't realize it would take so long. 
So thank you so much for watching. This has been Property Club Peter from Property Club and Expat Unchained. Luke from Expat Unchained. Double yeah. thumbs up, guys. Thanks. Nice to meet you guys. And are they gonna? Um, are you gonna post this somewhere? Uh, you said yes. This? What I'll do, I will post this quiz on our Facebook group. I think it's already been posted on the. the Property Club Facebook group. Maybe if you could do the same, that'd be great. Yeah. And uh, if you feel like you want to answer these questions, just number your top one to five cities for the certain questions. Okay, then email arianfria at gmail.com. This time next week, we will be revealing the winner of the top five, top five cities in Asia. Right. Yeah, expat on chain, property club. Yes. Free your mind. Get out of the West, guys. Get uh, out. Yeah. Take back your life, take back your freedom, and take back your manhood. Are you going to do the uh, the panel sometime soon? We will do an expat panel too. Thanks, cool. guys. Bye-bye.